Hi everyone, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel today. My name is Taylor with Active Girl Lighting and I'm excited to introduce a new series of products which are our T8 high output horticultural fixtures behind me. We have the four foot four lamp fixture on my left. We have the three foot six lamp fixture on my left and then we have the two foot four lamp fixture behind me. We developed this series because customers were giving us feedback that the T8 high output ballast bypass installation process was a bit tricky for them. So instead of having people have to do this on their own, we have began to offer this system as a way for customers to have everything ready to go outside of the box. Now I kind of wanted to just go quickly into the general reasons why having a fixture like this may be more beneficial for your facility versus one with a ballast. Uh, traditionally, uh, lamps, fluorescent lamps required ballast to operate. And some of the negative aspects of that are that the ballast will add additional wattage onto each lamp and it will actually in turn add more heat. So that's never a good thing when you're trying to control the environmental agricultural uh, situation of your setup, either in your home or in your commercial setting. Um, another benefit of not having a ballast is the uh, longevity issues associated with ballast. Uh, ballasts do not last forever. Maybe they'll last 15 to 20,000 hours for a good one. So not having one in a fixture like this uh, means that you will essentially use the fixture as long as you have power running to it. So we could use these 30,000 hour lamps up to 30,000 hours and if a new technology comes out or we want to swap them for a new lamp, um, we have the ability to do that. So essentially these fixtures can last 10, 20, 30 years if you, if you maintain it and take care of it. Um, another benefit is that there's no buzzing and no flickering that's associated with ballast. Um, especially towards the end of a ballast lifespan, it really starts to get fidgety with how it operates on the lamps. So to completely cut that out is actually allowing the lights to offer pure photon output for the uh, lifespan of them. Now to get into the individual schematics of each fixture, um, I'd like to go into the wattage and the coverage area for each of these. So for the first fixture we have here, we have the four foot, four lamp fixture, which you can run either two lamps or four lamps at the same time. Um, these lamps are 22 watts each, so altogether this fixture runs 88 watts and it covers up to a three by four foot area. Moving on to the next fixture, we have the three foot, six lamp fixture, which can either run three lamps or six lamps altogether. And this fixture utilizes 14 watt, three foot lamps so altogether, this fixture runs 84 watts and can cover up to a four by four foot area. Moving on to the final fixture, we have a four lamp, two foot fixture that has one switch so we can either run all or none of the lamps at the same time. And uh, this fixture uses nine watt lamps. So altogether, this fixture runs 36 watts and it can cover up to a uh, two by three foot area. Now for the spectral analysis portion of the video, I wanted to focus specifically on the three foot six lamp horticultural fixture we have set up here because this skew uses the sun white spectrum lamps and the red blue spectrum lamps side by side. So to begin, I want to get a quick reading of the sun white spectrum lamps using the Everfine plant lighting analyzer. And I wanted to show you here that this high CRI uh, wavelength actually goes from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers and beyond close to 800. So you're actually getting uh, what's called IR red in the 730 zone, which plays off the 660 NM and it creates what's called the Emerson effect or an increased rate of photosynthetic activity from 10 to 15% and up. So this spectrum is great for that, basically full cycle growth and the RA number, which is a CRI number, is 96.6. Uh, so we're, we're shooting for 100 to be like natural sunlight. Now, I'm gonna take a quick reading of the red bloom spectrum to show you what that looks like. And you can see here that this is a bit more dialed in for the blooming or the fruiting stage in that it has 450 and 700 uh, sorry, 660 nanometer wavelengths, but it also has that 730. So we're seeing the Emerson effect here as well. 
But where it really gets interesting is when you combine the two spectrums together and you take a quick reading and you end up with what we have here, which looks a lot like the red bloom spectrum, but it has that green from the sun white. So it's, it's like a more dialed in uh, horticultural spectrum here. You're, you're not wasting as much of the light in the green area as that can be reflective of some leaf types. Um, you're getting a deep canopy penetration from the deep reds and uh, you're able to do full cycle growth and production for things like strawberries or hydroponic lettuce or anything in that nature. Now for the PPFD portion of the video, we're going to take each light and put it at 12 inches and 24 inches above this area where we're going to be recording the PPFD points from the center out every six inches. So for the first fixture, we have the six lamp three foot fixture we discussed earlier, and we want to put the leveler on it to make sure that it's completely level with the ground. And we want to make sure that all the lights in the room are off. So the only readings we're getting are from this source. So to begin, we're going to take a quick check to make sure that we're at 24 inches away, which we are, everything is center, and we're going to begin to take our first reading now. So based off this first point in the center, we have 101 PPFD, and this is quite a process, so I'm going to write this number down, and then we're going to kind of work our way out from the center. Now, as you can see from the numbers we have here at 24 inches above the plant canopy and 12 inches above the plant canopy, the benefit of having a larger form factor fixture is that the light that's received over this area is not as um, directly centered on the center, but it is more uniform and spreads out more evenly towards the outer edges. So a benefit of having a fixture like this versus a smaller form factor fixture is that you do get that uniformity and you're able to put the fixture actually closer to the canopy as close as nine inches or six inches and you can get that uniformity that you desire for a larger area for plants like vegetables, fruits, and even medicinal plants. Now for your consideration, we've also included the four foot four lamp fixture PPFD readings as well as the two foot four lamp fixture PPFD readings. So when you take all three of these fixtures into account, you can find the right solution for the right application for your specific needs by considering these numbers. Well, that's it for our video today. I hope it was helpful for your understanding of some of the latest horticultural lighting technology that's currently available. We really do try to uh, take your feedback into consideration when we develop new products for new plant species and new environmental situations. So please share your feedback below. Uh, or reach out to me directly at taylor at activegrowled.com. Uh, we want to do what's best for the planet by lowering um, energy usage and carbon output and increase the uh, happiness of our plant's life and um, in turn your own as a, a caregiver of them. So thank you very much and uh, until next time.